Mix for color, mass for value. What does that mean? Well, let's look at Mark Adams. He's a watercolorist. Take a look at this for a second. And then let's take a look at a more famous artist, Vincent van Gogh. And then we're going to talk about what this means and the different ways we see it. So let's get started. Well, it all began for me with paint by number. Maybe you remember these. I was always thrilled to get these in my Christmas box or holiday box. I, find, I found this fascinating and very relaxing to do. Each one of the numbers, of course, represents a color. And in the end, you end up with an image when you walk away from it. So let's look at some examples of paint by number, which has become quite popular in retrospect. Now take a look at all the different greens and take a look at all the different blues. That is where the um, artist, the original artist, must have had a painting and then divided it up into color patches and then assigned a number to each one of those colors, depending on the value of those colors, and then was able to uh, number them and create paint pots for the home artist to use. Now in the end, what you end up with is a fairly recognizable image. Somewhat simplified, but in some ways pretty sophisticated when it comes to composition. There's a lot of color in there, and a lot of, uh, would have been a lot of color mixing, except when you did a paint by number kit, of course the colors were already mixed for you. But it is very interesting when you look at one and realize that each one of those colors was assigned a value. And when those values were put near each other, they created masses, and those masses then created forms. And those forms in the end created recognizable. Uh, scenes to us. And that is, in essence, what the very thing painting is at its, at its barest bones. So in some ways, these kinds of kits are very informative, especially if you look at these, which is the finished product, and take a look at how these things are constructed and think, well, gosh, how could I do that in my paintings too? Or how might I decide to throw in a color spot of value? For example, you can see where it's done sometimes in a green patch, but there'll be a, a chunk of orange thrown in there, and it just heightens the whole thing, almost like pixelates it in a sense, but keeps the thing alive. And here's another one coming up, which is all finished and very proudly framed. <laughs> I don't think I ever got that far. This is a more modern paint by number, but it shows the same thing. If you can mass values together, Shape doesn't even matter as much as massing those values together. They will create form. It's just a more abstract way of doing it. And this is a paint by number kit. Other places where you'll see this done is, especially in merchandising, when you walk in and you see all the colors are put together. This is a fabric store, probably for quilting, and that's what we're going to talk about next. But when you have a fabric store like this, what they've done is they put the colors together, so those are matching, but they've also um, gray, graded them so that you have lighter values with lighter values and darker values with darker values. And of course, print gets involved here. We don't have to deal with print, but of course in painting we have to deal with uh, texture. So here's an example of a quilt where ma they've masked for value, mixed for color. If you stand back and blur your eyes, each one of those individual triangles will take on a value of its own. When you come closer in, that's when you see the individual uh, triangles of color. That's what I mean by mass for mass for value, mix for color, and that's a pretty dynamic way of doing it. The other thing that they've done here, which is a really good uh, painting principle, is when you have color surrounded by neutrals, you see how much of the color pops. It's really effectively done here. Here's another example of the same thing. If you really blur your eyes, you won't see all the different uh, colors that are in each one of those uh, forms and shapes, but when you come up real close, that's where you can see this them, I mean. And that's how you can apply it to your paintings and well, as well and come up with some really dynamic mixes within masses. The other place that you'll see it if you, is if you go into a yarn shop and, or a needlework shop, because that's the same thing. When you look at the canvas of needlework, what they're doing is massing for value, mixing for color in order to create forms. And that is the exact same thing that we saw in the paint by number kit. So there are lots of ways that you can start thinking about massing for value, mixing for color that have nothing to do with watercolor, but have to do with how uh, you can represent the world you know, by creating forms. So this is a more modern type of tapestry, but this has been going on for a very, very long time. <laughs> Remember these? These incredibly enormous tapestries back, uh, back when, um, gosh, probably hundreds of people worked on this one piece. 
But the same thing is happening here. And remember, these have been aged. The colors probably were really dynamic at the time. Some other more modern places where you'll see this are in cake decorating. What's going on here? Massing for value, mixing for color. And it's also happening in fashion. Some of you might have seen someone like this walking down the street. It's the same idea. And here it is in neutral tones instead of being colorful. Now, we started with the Mark Adams image. Mark Adams was a watercolorist who just laid down these washes that look like no human hand could have done this. But what he does is he is massing for value, mixing for color as well. But what he's so good at doing is being able to put in these washes where you can't see where, where one color begins and where one color ends. I mean, his ability to do this is, um, well, superhuman to say the least. So when I'm trying to paint, that's what I try to do too. But, you know, obviously I can't do this, <laughs> but, but that would be the holy grail to get to. So that's one way of, um, and so there's a watercolor example, but let's look at, at, a, um, at another example. All right, now the most famous painter probably on our planet, Vincent van Gogh. This isn't an image that I know very well. You know, there's a tendency when you see images really well that you stop seeing them after a while. So this sort of hit my eyes with, with a newness. But boy, think about paint by number for a second and look at what he's doing. He is doing paint by number theoretically, but he's able to see so many values within or so many of those color dots within value. And he's also doing color value swap outs. I mean, everything that he's doing here is just, you know, beyond, oh boy, beyond, um, I mean, I barely understand what he's doing. And yet I really do understand what he's doing. It is based on the paint by number. He is massing for value. He is mixing for color, but he's moving color. He's taking it so far to the extreme. He's also using complementary colors here. He's, he's just using every painterly thing you could use in order to enhance the image. And, um, and nobody does it like Vincent does it. So there's an ex another example of mass for value mixed for color. Let's look for at another one, um, which is sort of, I think we're more accustomed to seeing. All right, again, this is a Vincent van Gogh, and before I forget my sign off, my sign off is remember to mix for color, mass for value. No, it's the other way around, mass for value, mix for color, but it means the same thing. This one is not as pixelated um, of Vincent van Gogh as the one prior to this. But again, walk away from the computer or blur your eyes, and you will see that there are very, um, that there aren't a lot of values in this painting, but there is a lot of color. And so what he's done is he has mass for value, he's established where those values are, then he's mixed for color, and he's put in all those little dabs. And that's what I try to do as well. Uh, I mean, maybe, maybe, um, maybe it's not possible to do this, but um, I wake up every day and, and give it a try. <laughs> so, um, so I hope that answers a question that people have asked me when they ask me about what my sign off is, that it is, mass for value, mix for color. Some people think I'm saying mast, as in uh, the mast on a ship. Well, I'm not, I'm saying mass. If you can create masses, if you can find your masses and plug color into them, and by color I mean more than one color, you can end up with more dynamic paintings than you can if you were to fill in one area with one color all by itself. And filling in one area with color all by itself is almost the definition of what coloring is, if you remember coloring books from our past. And that's not what we were doing as painters. As painters, what we're doing is establishing those value shapes, and then we're mixing color and plugging color into it. So, um, so I hope that's helpful, and I'd like to know um, where you in your daily life are seeing this happening, because I think we see it happening a lot. Um, and I think that our brains want to organize the world in this way. It's how we interpret the world. So um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.